When it comes to camouflage, there are quite a few factors to look at, be it the design, colors, who wears them, where they're worn, and obviously how effective the patterns are overall. Starting in the late 1990s and going through the mid-2000s, a new method of camouflage development led to the creation of designs soon referred to as digital or pixelated patterns. With the science behind it being studied on and off since the 1970s, it was still relatively new, and there were quite a bit of mixed results, with some patterns being extremely effective and others being much less so. In this video, we'll be looking at a pattern that sort of falls right in the middle of the effectiveness spectrum, the Type 07 camouflage family used by China's People's Liberation Army. The People's Liberation Army, or PLA, and to a greater extent, the entire Chinese armed forces have quite a diverse and often complex history. When one looks at uniforms specifically, you can take that complexity and often increase it tenfold. But in order to understand the development and usage of the Type 07 family, we must first take a quick look at the structure of China's armed forces. Founded in 1927, but really forming in a larger way in the years after the end of World War II, 1945-49, the PLA consists of the PLAGF, or People's Liberation Army Ground Forces, which is comprised of conventional land-based forces, the PLAN, or Navy, founded in 1949, which is their sea-based units such as the Marine Corps, Coastal Defense Forces, and Surface Forces, to name a few, the PLAAF, or Air Force, which operates and maintains the bulk of air-based units, be they fighter jets, transport crafts, bombers, and for this video, the Airborne Corps, the PLARF, or Rocket Force. This was known as the 2nd Artillery Corps until 2015, when it was changed to Rocket Force. This branch maintains and operates all land-based ballistic missiles, be they small and more conventional, or larger and nuclear. Then finally, the newest branch, the PLASSF or Strategic Support Force. Founded in 2015 as well, it is in charge of all electronic, cyber, and space-related systems and programs. Additionally, there is the PLA Special Operations Force, which is essentially their special forces unit that is split among the various branches. So with that little breakdown of structure, we can start looking at the camouflage itself. Since the late 1970s, the PLA has in some way or another utilized camouflage. Between then and roughly the early to mid-2000s, they fielded a large number of patterns, both on a large scale and quite frequently on a smaller one. Their first large-scale adoption came in 1987 with a woodland camouflage pattern simply referred to as Type 87 Woodland. This was issued to all ground force personnel as well as certain units of the Navy and Air Force. It would be duplicated and adjusted for other branches seeing urban and various oceanic types as well. In addition to these, quite a few other distinct patterns were fielded, leading to a somewhat decentralized issuing of camouflages among the various branches and agencies. With aging uniforms, patterns, and military structure, the PLA began a sort of revamp to many elements of their armed forces around the mid-2000s. This is where the Type 07 camouflage story begins. During 2003 and 2004, two digital patterns were seen. The first was based off the US MARPAT pattern, which was short-lived, being used in a limited capacity by troops stationed in China's northwestern territory of Xinjiang. Simply referred to as New Camouflage Summer Uniform, it was printed on an older style cut and slightly altered the colors of the MARPAT design. The following year, the second pattern, referred to as 04 Digital Camouflage, was spotted, differing from the first by way of a shrunk-down design and altered colors. This too was very short-lived and didn't go beyond a testing phase. However, these two were essentially the starting point for China's digital camouflage revolution and are often seen as precursors of the Type 07 pattern. The first direct trial piece, specifically what would become the Woodland version, was tested shortly before it. Not making much of an impact, the coloring and cuts seen on it were significant though, as it changed from the older style to one that would be reminiscent of the one introduced with the Type 07. However though, the official start to these patterns began on June 30th and July 1st of 2007. In celebration of the 10th anniversary of Britain handing over control of Hong Kong to China, the PLA unveiled a swath of new uniforms, equipment, and gear. Worn by members of the Hong Kong and Macau garrisons, these new uniforms updated cuts, adjusted locations of ranks and badges, and generally overhauled the overall look. A new series of camouflage was also announced at the time, simply referred to as digital camouflage in four versions, urban, woodland, desert, and ocean. Officials from the QEI, or Quartermaster Equipment Institute, such as senior engineer Zhang Shudang, stated at that time that the design resembles a big bunch of flowers from a distance and crushed gravel close up. 
They went on to mention how older pattern designs were hand-painted, which essentially caused them to stick out more as the contrast between the different colors was a lot more prevalent, and that this new digital design scheme was more effective in concealment to the naked eye, certain infrared wavelengths, and was more effective in low light due to its overall design and use of special dyes. Now one could argue that this was nothing new, and many designing digital camouflages in general make the same claims. But this statement showed that there was more research and development put into it than just lifting an established design and changing its colors as seen on the prior prototype and digital patterns. Beyond this though, not a whole lot of information is out there as it's remained unavailable to the public. But the story of the Type 07 after its initial development gets rather interesting. So let's press on. With all of this talk of a new pattern, it wasn't actually seen by the public officially until October 1st of 2009, when the four designs were unveiled during the National Day Parade in the capital of Beijing, commemorating the 60th anniversary of the establishment of the People's Republic of China. Now that sounds pretty straightforward and simple, right? An urban for cities and high population areas, a desert variant for arid and, well, deserts, a woodland for forests and more vegetated regions, and an ocean for water-based operations. But what do we have here? A fifth pattern that was worn by certain officials and soldiers during parade practice and training in the weeks leading up to the actual parade. Well, this essentially sums up the whole that is the Type 07 camouflage family. A lot of offshoots and one-offs, changes due to branch identity, confusion, and a decent amount of mystery and speculation. So let's actually take a look at the individual versions and their variants, in some cases numerous, and see how they started off and where they ended up. Going back to the photo of the initial four designs, let's start with the green dominant pattern. Originally known as 07 Woodland Camouflage, it was quickly changed to 07 Jungle after another pattern, the 07 Woodland, aka Universal, took its name. This version was intended to be worn in forests and more densely vegetated areas by all branches. However, it soon began being worn predominantly by the 2nd Artillery Corps a little after 2009. This section of the PLAGF became its own branch in 2015 under the name of Rocket Force, which, if you remember from the beginning, is in charge of China's land-based ballistic missiles. It has been said that the jungle version becoming a Rocket Force exclusive was due to the sensitive nature of their operations. Controlling and maintaining missiles of all calibers up to nuclear has led them to operate primarily in more rural and out-of-the-way locations that are often surrounded by vegetation, in which the 07 jungle would be the most effective. It saw an interesting offshoot which we brought up as that mysterious fifth pattern seen in Parade Village, the area troops used to train for parades and other ceremonies shortly before the 2009 National Day Parade. Sometimes referred to as either 09 Jungle or simply 2nd Artillery Corps Camouflage, it appears it was worn by select forces along with a number of coaches, officers, and officials in charge of training and ensuring things were prepared properly. It saw a more vibrant shift in its colors and appears to have been discontinued after the parade. Being that the patterns were unveiled for the first time on October 1st, coupled with its more bright appearance, one can speculate that it was possibly a prototype variant that was rejected and was simply used for parade practice sessions. Next up is the Desert, or 07 Arid Camouflage, a rather interesting version as it is issued to all but naval forces as a general purpose autumn winter camouflage. Obviously with snow operations, a dedicated snow pattern is used. Anyway though, this pattern was designed not only for the colder months of the year, but also arid terrains, deserts, and mountainous regions of western China such as Xinjiang, Tibet, and Yunnan. Seen being utilized primarily by the PLAGF, it is mostly worn by interior as well as border defense forces. It is actually one of the few that remained unchanged in both initial design and limited use variants. The third version seen was an urban one. Upon initial inspection, it appears to be the most commonly used and seen variant, the woodland. However, looking closer, you can see that the color orientation is a bit different. This version appears to have never really made it past the trial phase, not because it wasn't effective or had a problem, but because the Air Force had an issue with its coloring. Beforehand, Air Force and paratrooper units had been using a black and white woodland-based pattern that became very recognizable and was viewed as sort of symbolic. When they saw that the new urban pattern didn't have either black or white, but rather more muted grays, browns, and greens, they objected to it. When the 60th anniversary parade took place, members of the 15th Airborne Corps marched out with an updated variant which simply boosted the hue of the colors and shifted the blackish green to a more noticeable blue. Like the limited jungle variant, this pattern too wasn't seen again after the parade. But we're not done yet as a third version was actually seen a little earlier that year and then again in the parade village being worn by instructors which greatly deviated from the other urban patterns seen up until that point. This one was more blue dominant seeing whites, grays, tans, and a dark, almost purplish red color. 
Sometimes called 09 Aviation Camouflage, this one stuck around a little bit and was seen in a few instances such as a joint Sino-Russian military exercise that had been held in May. Seeing limited issue, the Air Force didn't settle on a final design until 2011 when the fourth and final version began being distributed. Frequently called the 07 Urban or City Camouflage, even though it was developed much later than the original, it saw the 09 aviation pattern slightly altered, removing the tan and purplish red colors and adding in black. It would become the standard uniform of paratroopers as well as much of the Air Force and would be worn for a time concurrently with the 09 aviation version. Now, looking at the first versions of the urban pattern with the final ones, you can see quite a bit changed, where the pattern went from an efficient urban one to one that would work in the air, but not so much on the ground. This didn't go unnoticed to many and was brought up quite a bit, but before we dive into that, let's look at the other blue dominant version that started the discussion on these patterns' effectiveness. The final version of the initial four was the blue dominant one known as 07 Oceanic Camouflage, which was initially used by Marines and forces guarding small smaller outlying islands in the Pacific. Unlike the urban and Air Force patterns, it threw in a bit of tan and green, but still remained dominantly blue in color. The idea for a blue camouflage dated back to 1989 when Su Guodong, director of the Naval Coastal Defense Department, accompanied forces conducting a land survey in Nansha, the coastal district of the southern city of Guangzhou. He had noted that Marines wearing woodland camouflage stuck out along the beaches and shorelines and felt that a camouflage that concealed wearers to the water rather than land was necessary. Skip forward a few years and a handful of oceanic-based patterns were developed, with the most recognizable one, the 87 pattern oceanic, becoming the norm for the remainder of the century. With the 07 digital patterns coming into play, the Navy wanted to continue this idea, and so the Type 07 oceanic was made. The earlier version in the initial lineup, mainly reserved for units guarding and patrolling smaller islands and reefs in the South China Sea and parts beyond, saw the pattern take a slightly lighter appearance. Over time, though, the pattern was adjusted, going Going for a more darker look. As mentioned, this pattern was first issued to coastal and island defense forces as well as Marines. However, as time progressed, it eventually phased out most other combat and duty uniforms of the Navy. The problem was many started saying how when Marines conduct amphibious assaults and landings, they are only within the vicinity of water for a limited time. After the landings, they must move inland into either cities, jungles, forests, deserts, and so on, where they will stick out like a sore thumb. The same can be said to some extent for naval crews. In one instance, the question of its effectiveness was brought up during an interview with senior engineer Zhang Zhudang. He simply stated that the vessels are the target and not the crew members, but acknowledged that its effectiveness when used by Marines was limited. This version wasn't the only one scrutinized, as the same argument was made for paratroopers, as their version was effective while free-falling, but once they landed, its concealment capabilities dropped dramatically. Top officials did acknowledge these issues, and we'll get to their solution to it a little later on. Moving on, we have the most commonly seen version of the Type 07, the 07 Woodland Camouflage. Not to be confused with the green dominant 07 Jungle, which originally bore the name of Woodland, this pattern is also referred to by a nickname of Universal, which was used by much of the PLA for a time, but remained in service the longest by members of the Ground Forces branch. Seeing a mix of Woodland green colors and urban grays, it isn't technically a Universal pattern, but rather a general or standard one. Its intended use is for semi-urban or semi-woodland terrains, making it something of a transitional-based pattern. Not a part of the initial roster of designs, it has been said this version was developed as a direct response to the U.S. Army's UCP, or Universal Camouflage Pattern. But, unlike UCP, it incorporated more greens and browns, which made it more effective. Now, there are a few outliers in the 07 family, which are somewhat different than the ones we've covered thus far. The first one is something of an odd one, as it doesn't follow the same design or fully digital look of its counterparts. With the name of 07 Special Forces Camouflage and nickname of Hunter Digital Camo, this pattern is just an updated version of one that had been made a few years prior. With this unit of the PLA falling throughout all the branches, but known under the name of Special Operations Forces, oftentimes they'd wear the camouflage of the branch they served in. So for example, Naval Special Forces would wear Oceanic, Air Force or Paratrooper would wear Urban, and so on. However, there were a few instances where they wore their own pattern. 
one of the earliest being a DPM style pattern introduced around 2004. This was simply given a sort of facelift and digitized, keeping the same colors and shapes but just given more jagged and pixelated edges. Last but not least is perhaps the most infrequently seen pattern in the 07 family used for opposing forces purposes. Worn exclusively by the 195th Mechanized Infantry Brigade, also known as the Wolves Azuri or the Blue Army, a term used to identify opposing forces in battle simulations and trainings, this version had its colors bumped up quite vibrantly seeing two shades of green, a lighter tan, on a lighter gray background. Okay, and with that, we've pretty much covered all the versions and variants of the Type 07 digital camouflage pattern used by the PLA. Technically speaking, there were a few other versions issued to the People's Armed Police Force, as well as a few other digital patterns that have been seen being worn concurrently with the Type 07, but they are usually limited issue and actually differ in design from the 07. We'll be sure to cover those in future videos. All in all, quite a bit to take in, right? If you're feeling a bit cross-eyed or confused, we'll do a quick final overview of these patterns by covering the names they're referred to as, when they were issued, and what branches used them. First up are the two temperate woodland jungle patterns. These were used almost solely by the 2nd Artillery Corps and Rocket Force. Next is the Desert Arid pattern, which has been used by all branches minus the Navy and serves as a camouflage for use in deserts, along with arid and mountainous terrains, and as a general winter use camouflage pattern. Moving on are the two initial urban city variants. With these two not seeing field use in any large way, the first version was intended for use by all forces that may find themselves operating in urban or highly populated areas. However, when the Air Force found out they would be the ones primarily using them, they created the second, which saw use only during the 2009 parade. These patterns helped create the next two, which sort of fall into a similar category, which are the Air Force's pattern 09 Aviation, as well as the deceptively named 07 Urban, which was introduced in late 2011. On the topic of blue, we come to the two oceanic versions, which are really only differentiated by their slightly different hues. Now up was the most commonly seen and used, the 07 Woodland Camouflage, which is also referred to as Universal Woodland, used by almost every branch of the PLA at one point or another. And finally, we have the two odd versions, the bright green opposing force pattern, used for a time by the 195th Mechanized Infantry Brigade, and the special forces pattern which updated an older one adopted by forces in the mid-2000s. We'll leave that up for a little while, but hopefully that clears up some confusion and gives everyone a helpful reference by showing the vastness of this camouflage family. Two notes now, the first is that due to the nature of production, numerous varieties, and the internet in general, a number of copies, reproductions, and fantasy pieces have made their way into the collector's market. Because of websites like Alibaba, AliExpress, Taobao, and eBay, among many others, quite a few pieces have shown up, leaving many scratching their heads. Secondly is if anyone is wondering why sometimes you may see, for instance, a Type 07 Woodland labeled as Type 15 or another number, it's usually because it's referring to an update or change to the uniform's cut or fabric rather than the actual camouflage pattern. Now, some of these versions have made their way to other countries and groups over the years, some of which are Iraq's Special Operations Forces, which have used the 07 Arid, Armenian Forces, some of which were seen wearing ballistic vests sporting the 07 Woodland during the 2020 Nagorno-Karabakh War, and specific units of BRIMOB, short for Corps Brigade Mobile, or the Mobile Brigade Corps of the Indonesian National Police, who have occasionally been spotted using the 07 Woodland. Additionally, non-state entities such as anti-government groups and armies in Myanmar such as the Arakan Army, the Democratic Karen Buddhist Army, and the Kachin Independence Army have all utilized at one point or another the 07 Woodland as well. It's also worth bringing up Colombia's first digital camouflage pattern seen in 2006, which bears a striking resemblance to the 07 Woodland. However, when lined up against one another, you can see that the colors are similar, but the comparisons more or less end there. Though both camouflages are made up of squares in a pixelated format, the actual layout and overall design of them are quite different. Many believe that the Chinese simply lifted the concept from Colombia, but more than likely the two countries took inspiration from the same source, which simply resulted in similar similar outcomes. So the burning question is, what is to become of this camouflage family? Well, as mentioned a few times already, the problem with Type 07 was that internal branch politics affected many of the versions and variants. When the original four patterns were announced, they were practical, being designed for specific regions and terrains. But as time progressed, they slowly were split up and altered based on different PLA branch demands and requirements. A prime example is that of the Air Force's alterations to the urban patterns, changing it from a practical brown and gray dominant one to an ineffective blue one that would really only serve to denote 
note wearers as members of the Air Force. Additionally, older ideas such as the sea blue color schemes of past marine and maritime designs were carried over as well. As the PLA strived to modernize, restructure, and expand its influence on the world stage, many began to ask why a large number of camouflage patterns that didn't offer much in the realm of concealment were still being used, along with why ones that did, such as the 07 Jungle, were reserved only for singular branches, i.e. the Rocket Force. A few small-scale attempts were made, one such example was a multicam clone seen in 2015 that was used somewhat but never really caught on. Eventually, the PLA took all these factors and came up with a new camouflage family identified as Type 19. First seen by the public on a large scale during the 70th National Day Parade, 10 years to the day after 07 was unveiled, this pattern, also known as Jing Kong, as well as its nickname of Starry Sky because of its overall look, was designed to be issued based on location and operations rather than based around branches. No longer would Marines have to wear a blue dominant pattern in the deserts of Djibouti. Since its unveiling, the Type 19 has slowly been phasing out Type 07, but a final cutoff date for it has yet to be announced. Well, with that, we've pretty much come to the end of this video. Unfortunately, not a whole lot of info as far as the actual technical side of things could be dug up. But hopefully the 07's usage and evolution history being covered in a linear manner helped many understand this strange yet fascinating camouflage pattern. We'd like to thank Brandon Gao, DJ Go Emmanuel Kuriigama, and the group Far East Tactical as a whole who helped provide a large amount of information. Far East Tactical is an airsoft and milsim community with a focus on East Asian impressions, which has its own website, Facebook group, and store, where you can get a hold of quite a bit of surplus PLA uniforms and gear. Links to all three can be found in the description. Additional thanks to Garrick Shu, who also provided translation services and information as well. As always, be sure to subscribe or check back soon for more of the history of, right here on Uniform History.